All right, well, I was inside for a second. The FedEx guy came, and he brought me something. Let's just go ahead and get an extension cord over there now, because I think we're going to kind of do a little unboxing, and then we're going to use... We're going to use what I got, I think. Maybe that'll reach. Maybe that'll reach. We have... Oh. A Van Alstein GB1000 tire groover. Get this thing out of the box. I got really good tape. Oh, it's taped up like five or six, five or six times. All right. We seem to be doing a lot of unboxing on the uh, tractor tire. But, all right. Well, we got a sticker. Uh, important instructions only. Yep, yeah, we won't worry about that. Um, and then, so. All these, all these blades don't come with it, so don't expect to have all these blades. Um, they did send me some sample packs. Um, if I had to guess, this is probably what comes with it. Um, you've got two, you know, number four, six, eight, ten, and whatever a G, or well, I guess a GF blade is the series of blade. Um, and then he sent me these these blades um, just to try out. He sent me some different sizes. He wanted to make sure that I had about every size that he thought that I would need. Now I don't think that this is every every size of blade that they do. I told him basically this is what I wanted. I wanted a bunch of these, um, whatever size groove that was that we tried to groove. Actually, that's wider than what I put in there. I, I wouldn't mind that wider groove, but now that I've already got grooves in the skid loader tracks, I kind of feel like we need to match them. So let's see. Man. I might I might have to regroove. Whoa. He told me he was gonna send me some big ones. I mean that's that's a big groove. Wow. I wouldn't think that uh, this Groover would do something like that, but apparently he said that it's awesome. Um, I took his word for it. I told him what I was doing. Pick it up in a minute. That's probably, that's going to be the closest one. So I think those are the smallest ones that were in there. So I would assume those are the number 12s, I guess. Let's see what these other ones look like. There's a, a cardboard something. Oh, I thought maybe that was going to tell us something about the blades. I don't remember what. Some of the blades are heavier than the other blades. Oh, I see. They put that card in there so they can staple to it and it holds it in. Oh, I'd say these are the heavy-duty blades. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Oh, they're actually sharpened. There's a, a a bevel sharp in there. Well, now I don't remember which ones were the heavy ones. I mean, I'd say this one's a heavier duty blade. The SF or the SHGF blades look like those three are the same are those the same as this one how many two of each so there should only be two of the same even those I say those three are the same I mean all these are pretty close Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna try to use those. 
seems like these are both, those are at least both the same probably. I'd say those two are the same. Hopefully we, we can do these tracks with a knife aside. So I didn't want to mess with the China ones anymore. Let's go over here and look at my China one. It's somewhere over here. Is it in the box? No, I got some knives for it. Um, but it's the, I don't know, Amazon. I got it off of Amazon. The ideal. It's the ideal brand. It's that one there. It's some it's sitting somewhere here. I don't think of oh there it is right there. So this is the one that I had. And I grooved like three or four grooves and I bent that. I was actually bending this part as I was pushing it. I had to bend it back. And I thought, you know what? I'm fighting this too much. I don't want to mess with it anymore. I want something better so I was gonna buy a Vivor a China one and then I thought to myself let's not do that um, so let's let's get something that we can use and use and use and use not that I'm gonna groove a whole lot of tracks I need to, I like unboxing stuff on the back of the skid loader because it's nice and easy. And I feel like a bull in a china closet right now. But anyways, so here's our little power pack. That thing is pretty heavy. That's got some weight to it. Let's see. Put that on the ground reach as far as we can i just i really want to try to groove one of these to see what it's like because when you push on this it's not turned on right now well i don't think no i don't think high low zero i mean it's plugged in let's go ahead look at that we got an allen key so, let's see if I can keep you guys in camera here, or in focus, in shot. I'll get it right, I promise. And we're going to push. So that's, it's got a cut bevel on it. I mean, they kind of feel a little sharp. How deep do we want to be? However deep those were. Something like so. Maybe a little deeper net, maybe Maybe we'll recut what we have there. Let me see, get a good gauge. I don't know, that might be all right. Split the difference. Right there, perfect. Perfect, right? Right. Like the fact it's got that. Um, so now, when you push this thing onto there, 
it is supposed to like instantly heat up that blade. Um, let's uh, let's try two on the high side. I have no idea, absolutely no idea. Um, let's see what it does. Can you guys see? Kind of. <laughs> okay. That went right through that like there was nothing there. So, but that's one that we already did. So, maybe it was just pushing through it. Let's there's nothing there, right? Holy cow. Kick it to three just to see. I had to put a little bit of force on it. Obviously, I don't expect it to not take anything, but. Oh, that's the that's the number there. That's the number. I'm three on the high side. Hardly any force to do that. Um, I don't know. I can get through there. I'm trying to gauge on where height wise to start it. Wow. Wow. That is so much different than my tire iron one. That is so different. So different. Let me get you guys over here. Hang on a second. Doesn't take a lot of force. Not a lot of force at all. I think the combination of it being sharpened and it actually heats up better, I think helps it. And the whole reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to get more traction out of these C-blocks. Um, that's even a cleaner, nicer groove than what I could ever cut with that tire iron part. Um, this was like, I, I paid full price. They did give me the two sample packs of blades, um, but I paid, uh, it was like 500, I guess I could look at the invoice. I think it was 500 bucks, 560 bucks, something like that. Um, but I'm trying to get some traction out of these stupid C blocks. Um, I mean, if I knew what it would do, I would almost use that big giant blade and I'd just take this full section out. And I didn't think about that. That that might be an option. Um, I think this might help giving us that separation there, but I don't know if it's a big enough gap to get me the traction that I'm looking for. Um, I don't mind cutting these tracks because I only paid a thousand bucks for the set. It was a guy here in town he had a whole bunch of them. He had whole containers of them. And uh, I bought a set. I thought, a thousand bucks. We'll run them. They're supposed to be DRBs. I don't know if they are or not. But. Okay. So if you guys need a tire groover, this thing's pretty legit. <laughs> Um, yes, you could probably buy that Vivor, and it might be close to the same thing, but this thing is cutting out really nice grooves that's really slick, really controlled. Holy cow. Um, and I'm not putting, I don't have to put hardly any force on it at all. Um, that's going to make it go really quick. The nice thing is is I guarantee, yeah, that blade is not deformated at all. I bet you I could do both sides of tracks with this one blade. Now, 
You guys know that I have a. Uh, you guys know that I have a John Deere 4066R um, ordered. Been waiting on it for a while. It's supposed to be here next month. The whole reason I told him, well, maybe I need some big bits or some big knives. Um, I thought about cutting the R4s. I was going to order. I ordered a snow cab tractor. So um, I guess you know that part of it. I did order a snow cab tractor. I ordered it with the loader so we can push snow. Um, but I was going to order it with the Nokian snow tires. And I was just, I was so close. It was another 2500 bucks, I think. Um, it was, or two grand something. It comes on the R1 wheels, which are adjustable over the non-adjustable R4 wheels. Um, but the Nokian snow tires are more of like a all-terrain, you know, snow tire, but it's, it's an all-terrain tire. I was afraid the sidewalls were going to be too thick and it was going to ride too rough for everything else. That's one of my main concerns about, or one of my main complaints about this tractor. If you don't have the loader on it, and you just have, you know, just just the tractor and you're trying to do work, even with like eight or 10 pounds, the front end's so rough on this because of these big tires. Um, the the part of the tractor that I really liked, I really liked the, the big tires, but it makes it ride so rough. Oh my gosh, it's so rough and it bounces. And then with the mechanical, I mean, if I would have bought the M6060, maybe it would have been better. But with the mechanical foot pedal, and then you start bouncing with the tires, it gets you in that rhythm, and you kind of do this. Not good. So the deer should be here next month, and I may end up doing some creative cutting on the tires to see if we can get more traction out of it, because you guys know I'm also on hills. But I think this will step up my game on these tracks. I would have to guess that that would make those work a whole lot better and if it doesn't guess what i've got those big blades i didn't think about i can use them i think i got up to like three quarter an inch or or one inch i can just take this whole pad out i can just take that whole center section out and just have me a set of bar tracks that look like zigzags off a of deer they do pretty good in the snow and they do pretty good on hills so anyways i'm gonna throw this thing on a shelf i'll finish this uh probably over the weekend I'm not going to mess with it. I'm getting the tractor ready to go seeding tomorrow. Um, we did. We did get some stuff figured out on the seeder. If you watch all my videos, um, you know that I did a video like Woods We Have a Problem or something like that. So they don't make a gear to make it to where you can primary seed with that seeder for fescue. You need to put down 10 pounds per thousand or 10 pounds per thousand which is 435 pounds an acre. I normally, you need to do eight to 12 pounds per thousand. Everybody usually hits about 10. I usually do a touch more. I'll do 450 pounds an acre is what I normally seed. Um, and they don't make a, they don't make a sprocket or anything to gear that to make it work. So what I had to do, they did have a gear. So I had to order a gear made in china uh, that's the part number on the gear but uh the part number that is not the part number of the gear you have to put a three on the end so it's a one zero zero one nine eight three instead of a nine eight two now that won't help you any unless you have a friend like david that can machine the gear so this gear had a shoulder on it it was probably a half inch shoulder, so he machined that down. We pulled the bearings out of it because the gear comes with the bearings. And then he centered them because what I got with my cedar is a slowdown sprocket. So this, as you see, it has a shoulder there and a shoulder there. And the gear set, the sprockets are centered. Well, this one was offset too much a quarter inch, and they told me that it would. Well, this gear was incredibly expensive and for a gear, and I had to machine it off and make it work. I don't know if it's going to work yet or not. I have to try it out. But he made me some press-on spacers and put the bearing back in there and centered the bearing like it was and all that. So this will make it run in the middle, and they said that this will speed my chain up 200% on the cedar. That's quite a bit. 
So they said that that will get me where I can seed 450 pounds an acre with fescue and it will not hurt the cedar. So if that's something, if you guys watch all my videos and you're, you have that cedar, let me know. Um, I think we've got it figured out to where we can actually manufacture this gear and it would be the right gear and you wouldn't have to buy one from them and then still pay somebody to machine it to make it work. But this, I, I needed to spend, it was about 150 bucks is what I got in this gear. Um, and it wasn't right. That's not including the machining. We had to machine it and make spacers and all that. Um, we should be, I, I'm hoping that I could at least hit that price and it would be the right gear. Um, anyways, hopefully it would be cheaper, but I don't know. Anyways, so if you're watching the video for the tire groover and um, you don't care about my other stuff, that won't make any sense to you. If you watch all my videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but I'm definitely going to, uh, I'm definitely going to groove the rest of those. And I, um, I didn't want to spend the money. This, you know, like I said, it was 550 bucks. Let me see if I've got the invoice. Maybe they put an invoice in there. Okay. So it was more money than what I thought. Um, no charge sample packs shipping and handling okay so it was 672 dollars <laughs> there was another one i was looking at for 500 bucks or something and then there was a vivor for it was like three it was half the price of this um so it was 703 dollars is what i paid for this they did give me the sample packs like i said um i don't know how much the sample packs generally cost it didn't show a price on there but Anyways, it was $700 with shipping and handling, but I tell you what, I'm not pushing on this thing hardly at all. Um, I don't know. I don't think that I can, I can reach that one. I mean, That is so easy, it's like butter. And then the nice thing is, is you don't have a heating iron, like the other one's a, like a soldering iron. It's hot all the time. Now I'm sure if you touch that, it would not be kind. Um, okay. Um, Um, okay. D are you seeing this? I'm not going to touch the blade. I'm not, I'm not that brave, but there's, there's no heat in that. So sitting it down, you know, whatever, uh, that, that's kind of nice. And like I said, it makes really good cuts. That is so smooth. He said, you don't want it turned up too high to where it's melting the rubber. You don't want it to melt, but that to me looks really good. That looks like some manufactured piece that you cut out with the proper tool. So, anyways, uh, if you want a tire groover, this is the GV1000 by Van Van Austin's. I don't know how the heck to really say it. Van Austin. Um, made in America. It says made in USA right on it. The Vivor are made in China. It says made in China. Um, these are made in the USA. They said that they manufacture them uh, right there in the plant. Now, I'm sure some of the parts might come from China. You have to source stuff from there because, I don't know, people in the U.S. want to make too much money or something. I have no idea. Greed from big companies. But um, anyways, I would definitely recommend it just by that little bit of use. And the two other ones that I've used before, this thing's badass. Um, anyways. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can catch all this stuff when I put a video up. See ya.